Huh, it's been a while. Well, I guess it's time to play some Zelda. Lock and load. Link's crossbow training. This isn't much of a game. Link's crossbow training is sort of like a gimmick. It acts as a demo for the Wii Zapper accessory and can only be purchased with it, not separately. It took the Wiimo and Nunchuck and fused them together to make a gun-like controller. While a weird and not so useful concept for a controller, it worked really well with the game. Even Link had his own version of the Wii Zapper used in the game and in the box art. The game itself is a blend between on-rail shooters and run-and-gun games. It's very archaic, as the main goal is to get as many points before the round ends. With the game taking place in Twilight Princess, having you travel across its game's world, from temples, villages, to the open field, or even down Zora's River. It turns Twilight Princess's Hyrule pretty much into a shooting gallery. And I remember getting this game way back for my birthday when I was really young and falling in love with it even for just a demo. I mean, it was more Twilight Princess content, even if it was an on rails shooter, as the game came out one year after Twilight Princess, using the game's assets to demo the accessory. And honestly, I kinda wish Nintendo did more spin-offs like these for other Zelda games. Well, the game just felt like a complex series of minigames that could've been in Twilight Light Princess, it was still fun for what it was. Even if it didn't bring much to the table outside of it being a demo for the Wii Zapper, the game itself seemed much more worth it than the accessory to me. And the ads didn't help that fact. Outside the initial infatuation with motion controls, which I'm sure many exhausted through Wii Sports, the idea of motion controls seemed more annoying than convenient. And while the Wii Zapper was compatible with other titles, the games were just as fun without it. Personally, I like to assume that most people who bought the Wii Zapper bought it for Link's crossbow training instead of the actual hardware. The demo itself let us explore Twilight Princess's world in such a different way. It brought an experience to the series that we never had, which being the Zelda fan that I am, is always nice to see. Now, I'm not trying to complain at all, but I'm gonna sound like every Nintendo fanboy here, so hear me out. Mario has tons of different spin-offs, from the many different sports, party, RPG games that are all different from the main series games, there is so much to work with in the Mario universe. And while I get it, Mario is the mascot of Nintendo, we can't deny that Zelda has always been close up there, not just in popularity, but in longevity. And to continue the fanboy remarks real quick, while some may not see much in this, this oddly meant a lot to me. That being the first reveal trailer for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, where we see the Inklings stumble upon the Smash roster. In a fiery silhouette, we see both a close-up of Mario and Link. And in that moment, I felt like these were the kings of Nintendo, the top dogs, the two protagonists being shown to represent the entire company. They have always been Nintendo's most consistent series of games, and left major splashes on the gaming industry with each and every major release. So I think it would be safe to say that Zelda deserves the same treatment as Mario, especially with how well established the series now is. Hyrule Warriors has been a great example of how Zelda spin-offs could go, but I'm hoping for more genres outside of the hack and slash Dynasty Warriors styled gameplay that could get real old. And when compared to the Mario series, there's pretty much every style of game genre for a Mario game. I mean, there are even RTX style Mario games with Mario and Rabbit, so I mean, it wouldn't be too crazy to have a different genre Zelda spin-off. Regardless, the series is packed with so many different eras to explore, like how Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity only focuses on the Great Calamity in Breath of the Wild's era. Or Cadence of Hyrule, which also changes up the series' genre to more of a rhythm-styled game. A bad example though would be the CDI games, which Nintendo came to regret. Or the Tingle games, which are... alright, I guess. And surprisingly, Nintendo even had a spin-off for Wind Waker slash Four Swords, though a lot of people may not know about it as it was a game only released in Japan. Or as mentioned before, how Link's crossbow training explored more on the Twilight era with Twilight Princess's Hyrule. 
which oddly may be my favorite spin-off even over Hyrule Warriors. As till today, Twilight Princess's dark aesthetic has been my favorite within the series, so I would love to see Nintendo find other ways to bring back that realistic style Twilight Princess was known for. Interestingly though, Link's Crossbow Training wasn't the only Twilight Princess styled spin-off Nintendo made, with my Nintendo Pictocross 4 Twilight Princess being on the Nintendo 3DS. Outside of the few Twilight Princess spin-offs I mentioned, Twilight Princess seems to be the style of Link that still remains within the series outside of the game's lifespan. To elaborate, Nintendo has been recently representing two different versions of Link, as the series is now split into two different styles. The Blue Link, which is all about the sandbox technological world of Breath of the Wild, and the Green Link, which is all about the old school fantasy magic and dungeon crawling the series was known for. It seems that Nintendo is trying to differentiate the two different styles and keep the Green Link sort of its own thing. And what I mean by that is how they have two links shown in the new promotional art for places like Nintendo of America or Nintendo of Japan. Both Breath of the Wild Link and Twilight Princess Link are used for promotional artwork and even full-size statues of Link dressed in green, which were added to the stores after Breath of the Wild's release. Hell, I actually remember when Nintendo first added the Twilight Princess Link statue to their NYC store, and how happy I was seeing it being the Twilight Princess version of Link and not Breath of the Wild. And interestingly enough, my wife and I were of the first 100 people to take a picture next to that Link statue to get an exclusive poster. It was honestly major luck that both of us were in NYC when Nintendo first revealed that statue. But anyways, my point here is that Shorter shows that even after the game's life cycle, they're still not done with this realistic style of Link. Another example before this was during the Wii U tech demo Nintendo showed during E3 of 2011. In it we saw a recreation of the Temple of Time from Twilight Princess with much more dynamic lighting, along with Twilight Princess Link fighting against the temple's boss, Armogoma. And when I first saw this, I remember how badly I wanted an HD remake of Twilight Princess. And while we sorta did get that years later, it could have been so much better when looking at this tech demo. As the Twilight Princess HD we got was just an upscale of the original game, and boy did that age. Unlike Wind Waker HD, which also got the same treatment, but ended up looking so much better because of its simplified, cell shaded art style. So while Wind Waker's art style was sorta of hated when it first came out, it became ageless, as till today it looks really good in HD, while Twilight Princess HD, not so much. Of course, for nostalgic reasons, I prefer Twilight Princess's style so much more, but I can't deny that it didn't age as well compared to Wind Waker. But seeing Nintendo come back to Twilight Princess's aesthetic would be a dream come true. I still want that realistic style Nintendo was going for with Twilight Princess, and I know tons of fans would agree. And obviously, I know that the game's art style doesn't define the game itself, as Wind Waker was a great example of that, but if that decade-old Wii U tech demo is an example of how Nintendo has improved since Twilight Princess, imagine how good it would look now. now. If you haven't picked this up yet, Twilight Princess holds a special place in my heart. It's the Zelda game that actually got me into creating my YouTube channel in the first place. Every time I think back to this game, I get so nostalgic, especially with how I'm reminded of how I first Let's Played the game. It was honestly the game that made me want to create videos and branch into covering the entire series. Which is why Twilight Princess has always been my favorite game. And until today, it is my favorite style the series has had. I want to say it was an evolution from the polygonal realism that the first 3D Zelda games had. Them being Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. With the Nintendo taking the weirdest turn in the series, with Wind Waker being the cartoony style it's known for, but obviously without it we wouldn't have had the Toon Link style of game, so I'm really glad it existed. But when Nintendo did decide to come back to the realistic style with Twilight Princess, I was so on board again, and they weren't kidding around. Till today, I feel like Twilight Princess is the darkest Zelda game visually. And since after Twilight Princess, it seems like Nintendo has tried to keep a balance between the realistic and cartoony art style so it can please both crowds. 
with Skyward Sword being the first example of taking the realistic look of Link from Twilight Princess, but having the very cel-shaded like colors of Wind Waker. And now with even Breath of the Wild looking like it's straight up a Studio Ghibli movie coming to life. And speaking of Breath of the Wild, outside of the art style, Twilight Princess Link is technically featured in it. That being with Wolf Link through the Wolf Link amiibo. I find this feature so cool yet bizarre, as it gives us two different links at once. While it doesn't make any sense canonically, as all the amiibo sorted didn't make any sense within the game, it was still cool to see Link have a companion with it also being Link. Which sort of shows even outside of the game's art style, Twilight Princess Link can still be implemented in future Zelda games. Though from what we can conclude, all of these styles matter towards Nintendo, as Smash Bros pretty much showcases all of them. Each era of Link mattered, and they're still represented in their games today in different ways. Honestly, Link is one of the most weird but interesting video game characters of all time. I don't know any other game that has had reincarnations of the same character again and again, all of them seeming different from one another, but also feeling the same. Sounds like an oxymoron, but this is the best way to describe it. So while this video didn't really cover Link's crossbow training, as the game doesn't really have much to show for, I thought it was a great segue into the Twilight Princess style of Link, as that is, like I said many times, my favorite style, and I just love talking about it, so I kind of want to make this sort of video. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Again, this video is just me sort of rambling about Twilight Princess, which, as mentioned, is what got me into YouTube. So making this video feels good after coming back from such a long break. Twilight Princess always reminds me of why I got into this, and while this evolved into something much more, thinking back to the roots is always nostalgic. Though, let me know what your thoughts are, especially on the Wii U tech demo, as till today, I'm a bit sour that we never really got anything more from that. Regardless, I hope you found something to enjoy out of this video, and if you did, please leave a like. As always, I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one.